Welcome to the Team Man Raga Show, your weekly rugby podcast where we have unfiltered views and we talk everything Raga. And as always, I'm with my main man, Shandre Van Veek. How's it, Shandre? I'm good, I'm good, my man, you? I'm lacquer, man, I'm lacquer. It's a special episode for us. We have our very first guest. We have Springbok 844, over 100 <laughs> Super Rugby caps, over 30 Super Rugby tries. The man with the quick feet. With the silky skills, none other than Lionel Mapu. How's it, Lionel? <laughs> How are you guys? Thank you for having me on your show, man. Ah, man. Appreciate the it. Eh? The pleasure is all ours, man. Uh, you're our very first guest, so it's a very special episode for us, man. I feel special. That was quite an intro. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to. I just had to, Lionel. You saw me do that. You saw me do that. <laughs> the fun of it. The fun. <laughs> And there's so many names, the fern, the rooster. Yeah, whatever they call it. <laughs> so let's yeah. actually talk about that celebration, Lionel. So where, where did that start? In? It, it started actually in school. I, okay. uh, it's like, it was like a, a way to put five points. Oh, so. Like, that actually means five points. Oh. And, put in that. and then uh, obviously me and a couple of guys started doing it. And then, uh, yeah, it just took off from there because like... Uh, yeah, I was out of school. I kept going with it, and then it started to get some names. Yeah, <laughs> the rooster, the fun. The whole time, everyone is like, "No man, this, 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 this Sonic, Sonic." Hey, <laughs> yeah, like, might have Sonic been, might have been name. Sonic. Hey. The speed can't be so simple. Yeah. No, it's just five points, guys. F- funny it's enough, <laughs> one of my, yeah. one of my nicknames is Speed. Hey, I'm just saying, wow, Speed. So. <laughs> So you talk about that celebration started at high school. So where where did the whole rugby thing start for you, man? Uh, uh in in high school actually, uh no not high school. I played some rugby in, in primary school. Okay. Uh, I went to uh Thornhill Thornhill Premier. I actually st- I actually started like uh cr- with cross country. So oh, I was a, I was a runner. Yeah. Uh when I was in Eastern Cape, uh I was at Thornhill Premier. And then uh, Tonal Primary, oh, African <laughs> English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then when I moved to Bloemfontein, I went to Kut Niman, and uh, eventually I ended up high school at uh, Fihar Park War. Yeah. And that's where actually, like, I started taking rugby seriously. I started playing uh, first team uh, when I was under 15. So that sure. was that was quite yeah, that's quite major. Fun. That's major. Yeah, that's yeah. fire. That's major. Hey, but you know what? I, I always say like great men come from the Eastern Cape. Yeah. It's just it's just what <laughs> it is, guys. Players, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of great. No, Eastern, Eastern Cape's got a lot of talent, man. Bruh, too much. I think it's sports. It's sports across the board, though. Yeah, I think because. Yeah, because we. I just think that people from the Eastern Cape just are like those are like true South Africans, you know, like we down to earth. We 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 love this country and we love every sport that we play. Of course. Like we would have seasons. Like you would remember, yeah. like like when you were a child, there'd be seasons. Like this season will be cricket season, Definitely. and you'll be standing there with for yes, <laughs> and you you'll be standing there with your friends, and everyone knows who this guy can't catch. <laughs> <laughs> Then they do the pickings, and then yeah. yo, if you last, you know, bro, right? you can't, you can't yeah, catch for yeah. days. But that will basically be it. Just us there uh, playing any sport during the seasons. This would be this. This would be that. And we play like locations. Like if you lived in this street, yeah. and you play <laughs> you against play guys against street. in other street, right? Yeah. And back in the day, bro, back in the day, like rugby, it's not like now. The game is so safe. Mm. The game is so safe. Did you check those stats when they put out for schoolboy rugby? Apparently, like, schoolboy rugby is, like, one of the safest sports to ever play right yeah. now. Like, that's how safe it is. The collisions that happen are not that hectic. It, like, yeah. all the players are, back in the day, bruh, you mm. know, bruh, rugby was, it was a it was a hard game, bruh. People used to tackle you, lift yeah. you in the air, put you down. Yeah. And you fall with your head. And yeah. then someone will stand over and, like, dance <laughs> on you. <laughs> and they'll pretend like they took yeah. your soul. <laughs> Just, yeah. So talking uh, about schoolboy rugby, so uh, so everything started for you in Fihar Park, right? In yeah. high school. And then yes, you, yes. you actually mentioned previously that there's a certain code that actually motivated you and that believed in you. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, yeah, uh, his name is Vali Uostajan. Uh Yes, he he truly believed in me. Eh? Yeah. From, from obviously he brought me or... He made that uh, move happen from uh, Kutniman when I was when I was in Bloemfontein to Fihar Park, 
And I'm, I'm really grateful for, uh, for that. And he believed in me from the word go. He, he, yeah. he knew that I was going to be a Springbok one day. He told me, uh, you're going to make your debut for the Springboks and you're going to be the outside center. And his words, his words stuck with me. And yeah. he was actually there for my first Springbok game. I actually oh, invited special. him. Oh, that's special. So, so that was, he was, uh, he yeah. was quite awesome. And I think that, that that's, that's what some players need sometimes, even in life in general. You just need someone, just one person just to believe in you. Anyone, bro. Just yeah. just someone that stands behind you and says, I think you can do it. Yeah. And then, I mean, yeah, it's amazing. No, definitely. The rest was history. I just had to put in the hard yards. And then, yeah. yes, from from there, provincial, from provincial, international, that was it was quite amazing. And the belief, I mean, like you said, like you said now, just need mm. somebody to believe in you that much for you yeah. to just uh, exceed the expectations. So Lionel goes to from Fijar Park and then you go to the Free State. Uh, yeah, I uh, out of school, I played the Free State under 19, yeah. uh, under, 20, under 21. Uh, and was in my same under 21 year, uh, I played, uh, actually I started playing Curry Cup for the Free State. Sure. So that was Huge. that was quite uh, an experience as well. Yeah, yeah. under twenty one yeah. is hard, eh? It's a, it's no, a, it's it was, a hard it was. place to play. Eh? It's a very hard. But place it, to it play. was fun, man. At that time, also, it wasn't the the, the pressure wasn't as much. As mm. The pressure pressure wasn't <laughs> as much. You you, you still you still there back then. You got an envelope with like two fifty or three hundred for matches. Matches. So you just like also look forward to that envelope after the game and to chill. But yeah, but it was a fun year for me. I think that yeah. Uh, obviously, like playing under twenty one and uh, yeah. curry cup in, the, in that same year, it was quite awesome. That, that was nice, and I, I also love the envelope. Uh, like our coach used to give the envelope before the game. <laughs> then before we, the game. yeah, <laughs> then we lost. Then it's like, yeah, crazy. Like how the envelope is the naughty game. So, so Lionel, like, so. <laughs> Did you have an agent then when you were playing for the under twenty one cheetahs? Uh, I got uh, I, I had an agent uh, at under twenty one because uh, uh, in that year I I, I played uh, sevens as well. I started yeah, playing sevens welcome. at the end of uh, at the end of that year, and I actually got an agent. He, his name was uh, he is Jan Aram. Jan Aram. Okay, I don't remember his surname. Mm. <laughs> Jan, uh, Jan Aram van Vijk or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the eyes that said to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that guy. <laughs> so on, 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 on that topic, so any advice you would give the youngsters in terms of did you have any issues when you when you signed for an agent at that at that young age? Uh, no, I actually got introduced to to an agent at, at that age, so that I wasn't actually looking because obviously I Okay. I, the I was there. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I just like to me it was like I played under 19. Oh, I can play a little bit of rugby. I play under 21. Oh, mm. oh wow! I, so I've got serious talent. And yeah. then, uh, actually, my first contract uh, I signed without an agent. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was okay. that was one. <laughs> that's one for the books. <laughs> that's, that's a flex. <laughs> that's, that's a big flex. <laughs> so, so yeah. Obviously, not knowing what's gonna happen, like yeah. four or five months after that. But uh, yeah, I, I would say obviously. Uh, for your own well-being, mm. uh, there are agents out there that's good and that can look after your your interests. Uh, and obviously, you just need to find the right one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and luckily, I think is with Saru nowadays, you have to be accredited. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't think back then they 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 were accredited. I think yeah. now you actually have to now write you an exam, have to, yeah. be accredited. Yeah. Yeah, that time oh, there were snakes, bro. Yeah, there were yeah. snakes there. Hey, they they used to take advantage. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I like that now, like everything is above books and like just above the board and you can just see everything and yeah. the way everything is done now. I mean, it, it it gets better over time as things progress. And yeah, the, so the agent, so yeah, as Lionel says, like just be diligent when you're choosing your agent yeah. as yeah. a youngster. No, definitely. Yeah, if you, if you see, if you see, I'm to say, hey, there's a little bit of dirt under that fingernails, <laughs> don't, don't, yeah. don't. <laughs> No, Don't exactly. And then your your time at the your time at the Cheetahs. How was how was it playing uh, curry cup at the Cheetahs? I actually enjoyed it. Eh? Uh, right. It was fun. Like I said, I was a youngster uh, coming up the, through the ranks, causing havoc. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah, uh, I actually havoc. enjoyed my rugby back then. It's like and it, and it was it was just fun, man. Mm. And uh, like I said, 
at that stage there was no pressure and then sure. obviously in that in 2008 I started playing uh, for the blood box as well so I was at the free state and I went to the blood box and then I came back for the, uh, from the blood box and then I started playing super rugby for the free state sure. so it my time there I, I can't fault it it was quite fun yeah uh, only what happened afterwards uh, not yeah, so fun we but, about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, well, like I said, I enjoyed it. They played a brand of rugby that like mm. suited me as mm, well yeah. as, a, as an outside back. And yeah. I, I love to run with the ball. So sure. you get the ball to me and I do whatever I can to get you over the advantage line or to score a try. So, so yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, that, that's amazing, man. Also, what, but you probably like the, the, the wrong person to ask because we were talking yesterday about like selection stress, you know? Like just being in the squad and not being selected because we talked about a lot, a lot of players um, that actually go through that um, at a younger stage where you there in the squad and like the stress alone of not being selected. How do you handle that? Yeah, that's quite it's quite difficult. Uh, I must say, uh, obviously, I've seen a lot of young players coming through and not mm. like immediately get that uh, get the exposure or the game time that they. Yeah that they need and uh, I've seen a lot of players and I've seen also a lot of players like give up uh, because mm. they, they're not getting like uh, mm -hmm. chosen for the team and just for uh, probably for me where I am like right right now in my career I'm, I'm I think back like how would how did those guys feel because I never when I started out I didn't have that problem like yeah. mm -hmm. I started and I played like free state and I was like I played provincial yeah. uh, it was only when I started uh when they when they ch uh, chose me to be in the Springbok camps, and anyway, I started to feel okay. Wow. Oh. Okay, now this is a new this is new territory for me. Yeah. I have to now. You can it's it's do or die. You, I either stop believing in myself, or I can still believe in myself, and I keep uh, keep on working harder. Uh, like I said, in provincial, I was okay. The coaches loved me. I, mm. I played every weekend. There mm -hmm. was never any stress. But when it came came to uh, the Springboks, I, I, mm. there was, it was actually four years. It took four years for me to make my uh, Springboks debut. So I was like in the group since uh, 2011, actually, mm -hmm. and I was just there. I was like, I'm like, I'm going. I'm I'm in form. I'm going out of form, my, mm. most probably, and then in form again, and then I never got a chance. But I, to myself, I was like, just told myself to keep working harder. You'll get there. Keep working harder. I think it would have been a different story if I didn't play at my union as well. So, yeah. Mm. But that actually helped me because I, if I'm at camp at the Springboks, I go back mm. to the union. I play rugby. So yeah, that balanced it out a little bit. Yeah. Mm. And it's it's a big deal because like you you in your head all the time. And people don't know, like, it's 95% of the thing, mm. like, when you're in your head. And you might just, you might not just fit into the tactical plan, right? They're like, oh, this is a good player. He's amazing. But he doesn't fit into our tactical plan. We want to hit at the breakdown. We mm. want to play the ball uh, in the front. We want to we wanna keep pushing. We want to we wanna cause havoc in the in, in, in the breakdown. And, that's, and then there's no plan for you. And then the coach is like, it's not because of your ability, but yeah. they don't tell you that. That's the yeah. other thing that messes exactly, you up as a player. Yeah. No, they exactly. don't tell you that. They just say you're not selected. And yeah. it's hard. It's it's very hard just mentally uh, fixing. But I love the way you explained it. Just focus and keep working harder and harder. And then at the end of the day, they'll probably have no choice uh, yeah. but to put you in the side. And especially I think what I also can say for the young players like, Learn some, learn some 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 other skills as well. Mm. That one trick that got you there won't necessarily keep sure. you there, but sharpen your other skills as well. Mm -hmm. Like you said, now do your extra breakdown work, mm. do your extra aerial work, do your extra evasion work, mm. so that you can be when they say, okay, now you're up, you can do all of those things, and you are actually good at all in all of those things. Mm -hmm. So talking about game time, you definitely never struggle for game time at the Lions. So after the Cheetahs, you moved to the Lions, and I think that's run about. John Mitchell, when, yes, yeah, when John Mitchell took yeah. over the Lions. So how was it working under John Mitchell at the Lions? Uh, different people have different views mm. on him. <laughs> <laughs> true, 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 true. Yeah. Different people have different views on him, but uh, I actually liked him as a coach. I, I thought yeah. he, like, he has a, a, an amazing rugby brain. And uh, like you said, like there was no... I was always in his like yeah. run-on team. So, sure. And I always obviously made sure that I am in a position to always be there. Obviously, when I play, I I leave everything on the field. You know, I try to be as good as I can. 
my best on the field and and he and fortunate enough he liked me and, and yeah. he picked me every week and uh, even once give me gave me like a nickname the electric worm i was like oh. thin. <laughs> 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 I, was, <laughs> the electric I was i was very i was like oh i was skinny i was yeah. like yeah 85 86 uh, kilograms back then but uh, i was quite fast and yeah i could bump and people sulky. i could yeah i could bump people i could squeeze <laughs> through tackles so yeah no i liked him as a coach obviously uh there are some areas maybe that yeah. as people believe that he lacked uh some but what is it about john was he was he a very strict coach or very strict very, very strict. strict coach yeah very strict coach yeah, he, will, he will tell you straightforward in front of everybody uh, in, yeah, front of everyone. in front of everyone you'll because you are the old. Yeah. And obviously, uh, some players don't like it. Uh, mm-hmm. And obviously, some would say his people's skills are not up to mm. par. And yeah, I think. But you yeah. think it's got to do with that whole New Zealand mentality? Like. Most probably. Yeah, it's probably how most, they Most they probably, yeah. Uh, how, how he obviously is also a little bit of old, but. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, he, 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 he put us through our paces uh, when mm-hmm. he was at the Lions, and we had this like military style training, and uh, it, it was crazy. And I think, I don't think obviously uh, the guys. The guys obviously like that. It was uh, sort of a, another camp Staldra type of thing. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. That no, don't play New Zealand guys, yo, bro. New Zealanders are hard, bro. You know what they say about when, when like, New Zealanders play cricket? You know what they say? Mm. They say, how bad was this guy at rugby that he decided to play cricket? <laughs> oh, that he started <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what they say. So yeah. you can see that mentality. Yeah. That was, yeah. That's amazing. So then, obviously, John Mitchell moves on, and then Swayze, uh, no, Akers Akker, takes over. Akker. You run Ackerman, and then you guys have a yo, you guys have a crazy run. I mean, yo, bro, one of the best Lions back. teams I've seen in a very long time, and you are very, you are a very integral part of that. Uh, how was how was that playing under Akers and later on under Swayze? Yeah, the glory days. If I can, glory days, if, if, yeah. I, if I can call it that, if I can call it that, the glory days without the cup, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely the same. glory yeah. days. Uh, yeah, no, no, it was it was amazing. I obviously, you know, uh, Akar uh, was there, and mm. he just he just stepped in like effortlessly like yeah obviously now you have a coach that knows the game that that's like played a couple of years before that yeah he did play and, and he understands the players he knows how to work with the players he knows how to manage the players and yeah and the players just just bought into that obviously mm. uh obviously the blueprint blue, blueprint was left there by john mitchell and when Acker came in he fine just fine you guys and, just went to the next level yeah and oh. uh, it took so obviously it took us a while to, to yeah. get to that level and i think Acker uh, Acker and swayze was the right guys uh, back then to 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 take us forward and you and you know that's that's a thing a lot of people miss especially when it comes to coaching is having players that want to play for you and creating that vibe in a team where you can be you can be the come style drag commander and demand things from your players but if your players don't want to play for you or mm. play for something greater than themselves it brings out something like uh, just another level that comes out of them when they want to play for the coach, when they're playing for something bigger than themselves. And we saw it at the Lions. I mean, back-to-back yeah. finals, it, it's, it's insane. That's one thing that people always overlook yeah. is that having a couple of senior players in your team, having especially for the new guys that come in, because I can yeah. just imagine if I had to play at that level and I come in and I see Cornell Hendricks standing there and I see Jake White as the as the coach and you're just like, oh my word, I want to <laughs> play for these people. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's a, it's a lot of things. And I always say like, because when I, when I look at... Um, the Australian coach, what's his name again? Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones. Uh, Eddie Jones. And that's the thing that he missed in this World Cup. That's the thing that he missed in this World Cup. He didn't make the players want to play for him. Um, he enforced his rule and there was no senior players to look up. It was just a bunch of youngsters yeah. just kind of like figuring it out as they went on, trying to follow a coach's um, th- th- game plan. And it just didn't work out. And I think that's the thing that they missed. Uh, yeah. the most out of that and that's amazing that you did guys that did at the lions and that's that whole thing of playing together as brothers and playing for something bigger than yourselves yeah so Lionel, what would you say what's so special about Akers and sway the culture that they build at the lions they as, just that they could like relate to i think that somehow they mm. could relate like with the players and like like you said now uh the players wanted to play for him sure and it was fun playing rugby mm. and you weren't like uh, boxed yeah you weren't like 
you weren't like told, yeah, like, but lesson, yeah, you have a game plan, but mm. you have the freedom in yeah, your game plan, can. obviously, mm, exactly, to, yeah. to, to, to play rugby. And, and I, pr- I promise you there was a couple of hard years. There sure. was a couple of years we lost like almost everything, maybe one, one in one, one in one season. Uh, but we actually got through that with no, uh, no ego system that, we, that mm. we had there. There wasn't like, any egos, the guys would come in and effortly, effortlessly come into the team, and the guys would welcome them with with open arms. Yeah. And obviously, like uh, Akar and Swiss steered the ship in the right direction. And at the end of the day, we all just wanted to like play together, be on the field together, even mm. off the field, we together. It, it was just crazy. And that's the team that actually had uh, Faf and Kwaha was also part of mm-hmm. that team. I mean, yes, those are the yes. two Springboks that I can remember. But yeah. what is it about Sway specifically? I just, I just feel personally for me, he's got one of the top rugby brains in the country. I mean, whenever he talks rugby, oh. Yeah. What is it about Sway though? Uh, a lot of players also ask me like, oh, a lot of players will say will say something different as well. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I, if they ask me about Sway and I say he's unorthodox a little bit, mm. and but he has a very good rugby brain. So we will do, uh, say, high school uh, drills. Yeah. Uh, and to other players, they'll say, oh, but uh, we're not in high school anymore. Like, mm. we don't want to do this. And all. But he has that, that, uh, that for him. Like, we, he has the small drills, but to teach you, obviously, oh, okay. to make the game as simple as possible. Yeah. He never tried to complicate anything. Obviously, if if you needed to keep the ball, we needed to keep the ball. You know that snake drill. You know, you go, you go, you have the ball in front. You get like four or five guys in like in a snake formation. Then you walk the, you put the oh, ball down, yeah. you fan out. We used to do drills like that, and that's like stuff we did in high school. Mm-hmm. Gut, yeah. You know the gut passes. Mm-hmm. You know that stuff you do. And for him, the basics was very important as well. Uh, playing space, the basics, because uh, Swayz obviously was was our tech coach at the yeah. Lions and. Uh, a lot of drills that he did, mm. some of the guys questioned it, but at the end of the day, uh, when we go out to that field and this thing come, comes off and it's like, this is actually what uh, an effect of what we did off the field. Yeah. And then you reap the reward, rewards on the field. So, yeah, a lot of people obviously has the different ways of, uh, yeah. of drills and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think just Swiss is just amazing. He, he just knows also what to say. And he, you know, he'll say, if the space is there, you take the space. It's take not, it on, yeah. you, just, you don't go there just because you want to go there. But mm-hmm. if you want to see the space, take the space. But obviously also stay in the system. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And then you're, you you also went overseas, um, played in Japan. What what, did, what happened first, Japan or France? Uh, Japan. Japan. Japan happened in France. How, how was it integrating into that culture? Japan was nice. Obviously, it was difficult with the with the language, uh, but uh, the guys there was uh, were willing to obviously speak a little bit of English, mm. uh, and they did offer classes. I think I went for class like for two days or so. And it, was like, <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it was quite. <laughs> Yeah, and my yeah. mind was like, <laughs> I was exhausted coming out of that class. But it's like a run and go run. You <laughs> go do a five k. Yeah. No, they the and like the the Japanese people, they were like the players especially. They were quite keen to speak a little bit of English yeah, and obviously mm-hmm. and learn and, and learn from us as well. So that that's actually made it uh, easy for me that that side and and they were so like. When I got there, I was like, you're such a, like a superstar. I, I went back in 2015, uh-huh. 2015, 16, yes. And it's like, you're such a superstar. Everybody look up, looks up to you. And I was like, oh, I hope I don't uh, bugger this <laughs> thing up. <laughs> but they, like, they, they make you feel important, man. And, and, uh-huh. and it was quite nice. And uh, what I've obviously also learned from them is their work ethic. They would like be on that field for like two to three hours. Sure. Working, working, working. And then I'm like... See, I can't stay on the field for so long. We go, <laughs> we go like in and out. Forty-five minutes, you go uh, zero to one hundred. You get out of there. Yeah. But they believe they have to work over and over and over, and 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 that's actually what I've what I've learned uh, from them. And it, it work, shows work, in the international work, rugby how far they've come. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yo, bro. <laughs> no, they've, yo, they've made they've made huge strides. They've made huge, huge strides. strides. It's even, like Argentina. Yeah. Like when I see yeah. Argentina, I'm like, yo. But even even the type of rugby that Japanese play, it's like it's so very quick and 
Pokes yeah, that, that, that was actually quite nice as well now because I was at the Lions playing running rugby. Oh, I go to a club there playing mm. running rugby. So in my head was like Coach Foy's always said, attack, 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 attack. He just wants to attack from <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, so so actually like I, I had fun uh, the, the couple of years I was there uh, at Kibota. Okay, cool. And then uh, from there you played in France? Uh, yeah, then I came back for like a year or two. And then I went just before COVID. I went to France. Yeah, just before. Just oh, before so you COVID. spent in that year. You spent lockdown in France. Lockdown in and France. What, I mean. what, what, oh my word! That must have been bad. Just being away from family. It's crazy. I know it was bad. Oh, bad. <laughs> 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 no, no, it, it was. It was obviously now I'm I'm moving to a new city. I mm. thought it was going to be a nice city. I'm in Paris. I mean. Paris, Paris, you know, Paris. Mm, yeah. Paris. And then, boom, a couple of months after COVID. You know, and it's like, then I'm in here in this apartment, all alone in that apartment that time. It's like, wow. You're only allowed to go to training and back. So that was quite a quite a different type of experience that I would have yeah. wanted to, to have. No. Oh. And then how did, how did that move come uh, come about, the ones from France? Was it through your agent? Yes, yes, that was uh, through my agent as through well. Through your agent. Yeah. And was that right about the time, I think, was Heineke? Heineke was a coach. Heineke was coach there. Yeah. Funny enough, he gave me my first three minutes of Springbok rugby. Uh, against, the us, <laughs> against the All Blacks. Against the All Blacks. Three minutes, maybe, no, 250 something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 250 something. <laughs> yeah, hey, a cap is a cap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a cap is a no, cap. But I think, I think, I think why Lionel's saying that, I think for me, personally, for me, there was a time Lionel was, was the best outside center in the country. You know what I mean? And it was just so sad that he wasn't getting chosen. And But yeah. It's it's a pity, and we, we, we know the politics that time in the game. Um, it's 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 just uh, it's also like the way South Africa. But yeah, one thing they can never take up. away is that Lionel's yep. a springbok. Right? Yes, yeah. you can never that, take that, that away. That's why I said a cap is a cap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have fourteen I of those. Even the, <laughs> if I saw the Aka from the bench or from on the field, I don't care. Cap is a cap. <laughs> and I've got two tries as a springbok. Yeah. yeah. How was it, how was it scoring two tries as a springbok? How was scoring first your try? first try? So the both came in the same game, right? Yeah, they both came in the same game. But my almost first one was, I think it was in Nelspreet. Yeah. I hit the gap. I thought, oh, I was through. And I like, I had a dive. Like, this is not a fancy one, just like a sliding no, grass one. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then they went to the TMO and then they said I knocked the ball. <laughs> 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 and then they said the ball, the ball was knocked and yeah. And then the two came in when we played in Argentina. Argentina. That was quite nice. Yeah, I think. But I was a substitute that time. I think for Mampimpi. Uh, yeah, but it was it was amazing, man. Scoring yeah. my first uh, first. Talking about it, you actually part of that was it was it under Rossi. In 2018, we played under Rossi. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I was. I was. I mean, everyone talks about the team culture. From uh, the players talk about it a lot. How was it for you, like being in that that team environment? Uh, how did you How did you fit in there? No, it was amazing. Obviously, Rashi came in and obviously he knew what he wanted to do. He was like yeah. straight to the point. There's no mucking around. And yeah. obviously, the the guys bought in. And the guys, if you play Springbok, you are ultra professional. So you, yeah. the coach says, you know what, you know how the coach is, how Rashi is. And you believe in that system. We didn't, we didn't uh, have anybody that did not believe, I think, that time there. Okay. Yeah. And especially, you could see that now uh, from 2019, yeah. uh, like, the guys bought in and they back still buy in. I mean, like you back to back champions. So there's something that he does and he does it right. And there's like no nonsense about how he mm. does business. Uh, and that's that's the Springbok rugby for you, man. Yeah. Jeez. So Lionel, then you come back from France. Then how did that whole? I want to I want to know how the move happened to the Bulls, though. Like oh yeah, so obviously I was. Uh, Obviously, I was in Paris for that that first year, yeah. And that COVID, the COVID hit, and then uh, probably four months into my stint in, at Paris, uh, Heineken Meyer and uh, all the other coaches that was there, Ricardo Locha and them, John McFarlane, they were let go or something. Mm. I don't know what. Or, I don't no, know, I know what you mean by that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, so that that was uh, that was also quite also a different experience now uh, we at the club i'm at the club uh we weren't doing so well that year mm. the club as a whole weren't doing i mean we had like good players there if you look at the guys like gail fiku and jonathan dante and sure. all of them were there sure. uh 
Sanchez was there as well. So we had, we had good players, but we couldn't mm. click as a team, obviously. And that's why, obviously, the coaching staff left yeah. uh, that same that same season. Uh, there was a player that played two years before, I think. He became the coach. Uh, and then uh, the, when I got there, the one was a winger. He still played that year. And then he retired and he became the co the all they're, they're like two head coaches, like sure. the co-coaching system going on there, obviously. So they have young players that they put there because Oof. both of them have more than 250 or 300 caps for Oof. Start Francais, so they're quite quite legends in the okay. Start Francais. Yeah. And uh, to say they didn't like me, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, uh, yeah. And then one, two, three, they told me, no, okay, uh, Covered it now, obviously, now there's some changes at the club mm. and a lot of guys left and I was obviously, unfortunately, one of those guys that left and then uh, I went to the start uh, south of France, uh, my second year there. It was quite nice, but it was like a third division club. Okay. But to me, it's like you can play still a little bit of rugby mm. and you can enjoy a little bit of seaside. And yeah. At that time, like they were on top of it. Like, I think the second year there, they had like um, like they had vaccinations uh, already. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then I went down there to South of France. I played a bit of rugby. Uh, to me, it's like just keeping fit as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I enjoyed it. Obviously, made new friends there as well. And uh, then at the end of that year, uh, uh, the Bulls, my agent obviously got the, spoke to the Bulls and then the Bulls came knocking and I was like, I'd love Wait. to come back. Yeah, Because obviously the two years I've spent there mostly was under covert. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's that's amazing. And how has how's it been being back at the Bulls? No good, no good. I mean, uh, when I when I when I when I first arrived there, I was playing again. So now it's I'm playing. Com- well. Yeah, now I'm playing competitive rugby again. Yeah. And, you know, I can try to show my skills and uh, my offloads. You know, and yeah. try scoring. <laughs> so that was it was fun, man. And it was obviously back uh, good being back in South Africa again after a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And so, you are seeing. So, Still going strong, yeah. URC, our first season, obviously make, making it all the way to the final. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was it was quite an experience as well. And how how tough how how tough is it playing those Northern Hemisphere teams? Different kind of tough than obviously playing New Zealanders and Australians. Oh, mm-hmm. The game, the thing is, that it's, there's no easy game, uh, as you can say. Oh, there's out and out. Every week is like physical. Every week is a fast-paced game. I'm not saying Super Rugby was was like easy games, but you had now and then the teams that you know, okay, now. <laughs> we're getting our five yeah, points there. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we're playing the Chiefs. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's, uh, <laughs> no, let's take say. two days break this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think uh, both of them, uh, they, they are, the, both those competitions are tough in their, in their own way. Obviously, for the physicality more uh, on the side of, of the hemisphere, so... Yeah, but it was, was was quite fun to change up a little bit, and mm. you know, and the and conditions, I, and the conditions you play, uh the cold, the wet. Yes, it's how just cold all does it day. get? I don't think people understand how cold does it get if you if you go like to Ireland or you play in England now. It's crazy how cold it gets. You stand there and then you don't know what to do with yourself. Your fingers are hurting, <laughs> and it's crazy. And every every little bump hurts. Like. Ow, yeah. Ow. <laughs> you hear the sound effects from the guy. <laughs> so yeah, uh, no, no, it is. It gets quite cold and tough. Okay. Yeah. And then what what would you say the main reason why South African team just tend to struggle a bit when we, especially when we're playing away? Is it the, oh. the pitches that side? <clears throat> I think they've got artificial pitches, or is it the weather? You see, if you it's quite difficult to to put uh, to pinpoint it. If, mm. I mean, if you look at the if you look at all the, the top teams, Crusaders never had trouble touring. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Leinster never has trouble touring unless they send their third string squad. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like uh, I don't know. It's probably just in a mind. It's like a mindset. Mindset. Yeah, yeah. It's like obviously the guys say we've been here for a whole year. Now we get. The chance to travel now is different elements. Now you focus are uh, maybe you focus a little bit off. Uh, mm. You want to go walk. You maybe walk an extra five k's today. Or you, the guys normally do some stuff they don't do. They, mm. At the end of the week, that actually uh, counts against you. Mm. Um, so I, I would say uh, the mindset and actually mindset. how we do things. Yeah, there's uh, there's no reason why we can't go over there yeah. and still like be uh, like a 
a good side that beats that beats teams. I think like 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 the Bulls show this past weekend. I mean, yeah, yeah, a flat of threshing away yeah. from home. Yeah. And people will say, oh, but Zebra, but still, it's but still, out, yeah, it's yeah. I yeah. mean, that game was tough. Even before that, uh, the week before, we had chances. The Bulls could have won that game. We had yeah. chance against Arsenal. Obviously, yeah. again, this may be a lapse of concentration here, a lapse mm. of concentration there. But it's totally doable to go overseas and win all your games. And so. I think that that's one thing Jake wants to put right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jake, I think Jake, one of his main aims is to go overseas and just to dominate. You yeah. Know I mean? mm-hmm. No, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, like it's a lot of outside stuff maybe contributes mm, to the sense. end of the week performance. Uh, obviously, the coaching staff and the team and you know, the coaches try to get that right to get us in the right mindset for that yeah. particular weekend. But yeah, I think not everything at that point is in their control. Mm-hmm. You know? sure. And then right now, uh, especially like uh, in the URC, who is your favorite player right now? Myself when I play, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said besides just. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. Uh, I like rugby, man. So I like uh, like beautiful rugby. Sometimes mm-hmm. we we jump, or joke around and say, obviously, uh, we joke around with some of the players and say, "Oh, ring rose this way, ring rose that way." Oh, did uh. you see how Jan- Johnny Sexton <laughs> runs with the ball? <laughs> But in all honesty, like it, it, they play for a top team, and uh, they when you look at them, it's it, everything seems so effortless, mm-hmm. and and that for me is like fun to watch. If I watch a rugby game, I don't worry about the bashing. I I want to see the ball obviously move, and it's like a poetry when everything comes yeah. together and in the game just flows like that. Yeah. Yes, especially when you see his head just go down. Like yeah. <laughs> 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 and he runs like that. He just runs like that. That's the weirdest <laughs> run I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah. Especially when he gets the ball. He yeah, just it's, it's just this. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, so no, it, uh, <laughs> that's, that's quite fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> so Lionel, how has it been at the Bulls at being one of the, the, the senior players, obviously uh, just mentoring the youngsters coming through? Uh, no, I tr- obviously I try my best to uh, be an extra voice to them. Obviously, helping them. Yeah. Uh, especially, I won't like I won't force myself. <laughs> yeah, sure. My phones myself in uh, to, to give them advice. But if they, I'm open to it, and they know that I'm open to it, and mm. we have obviously our little chats and see where we can do better. And I mean, I mean, I'm also not too old to learn, so I can still learn from yeah. uh, from a younger player. Uh, but uh, for me, it's just to get them in, uh, obviously, uh, a better position to to play the game uh, to the, the best of their ability. So if I can give a little bit of advice to Stedman here or to Moody there or to Kirtley there, because, I mean, I've played the wing and I've played centre. I've, I've been playing those positions for, for, for years now. And uh, sometimes people obviously try to overcomplicate the game when it's mm. quite a simple game. Uh, yeah, but I'm just uh, enjoying that position where I can actually, I am there for the, mm-hmm. to, for them to use, for them to get a bit of knowledge if, if you know, if they want to. Talking about Ken and Mooney, he's actually mentioned that, uh, I think you guys were roommates uh, earlier on and he's mentioned how, how the advice that you gave him earlier in his career that has helped him a lot. How, how, how special is Kenan though? No, yes, he's, uh, you, you, you could, you hear what they what they say about him. Another, uh, oh, the next JP Peterson because mm-hmm. he's, he's he's very he's very oh, tall. He's, yeah, he's he's quite big, bold. He has a speed. You know, he can he's got kick, everything. You man. know, uh, he's a very special player. I mean, to be I think he's twenty years old now and to have uh, won a World Cup. Yeah. That's that's amazing. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. And I think for him, like I've, I've I told him before, like it, it doesn't matter. Like you go on the field, don't try to do too much at that mm. time. If you go on that field, you enjoy yourself. Do what do what you do best, and what obviously what made you, what brought you to where you to where you are. Because the moment you want to do the extra, and then it doesn't mm. come off, it doesn't come off. Yeah, the moment you want to impress, it, just play your game. It will come. It will all come to you when you just play your game. You stay, yeah, you stay focused. It's actually a nice quote, like with Franz Stein. Franz mm. Stein so told. I think it was Kenyon as well. He told him that do whatever you did that got you chosen. You know what I mean? Yeah. The reason why you got chosen, just keep keep at it. Yeah. Mm. Because okay, like I'm, I, as I'm listening to Lionel like this, I think this is the advice uh, session definitely needs right now. Go miss Hulu. Because yeah, yeah. uh, yes, because I saw him, I saw him uh, too, like when he played against the Lions. Um, yeah. he, incredible. 
and then he had another incredible game and now when they played against uh Manchester yeah. hey, everything just fell apart he kept no, knocking but, the but ball on but the thing on. with Sasha and them I feel that with youngsters you have to let them make mistakes you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah yeah no yeah. doubt but I feel like ex- exactly what you just said now um I think just you you were because he went out in the game and he tried too hard Yeah. And I mean, his kicking is absolutely amazing. You could see him um, every conversion he, he converted over. Uh, but it's just that 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 thing you just said now of him trying so hard, yeah. and it actually played against him. Yeah. So yeah, that's the advice. I think he could definitely take that advice and mm. be like, yo, just 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 do what you do. You do best, and 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 do what you yeah. do to that made you get got chosen for. Uh, nah, but to I, make think, the team. I think I think Gaza will come back. Yeah, David will come back and give him advice. No, Talking about Damien, Damien has had the time of his life this past week mm. with the Springboks. Oh. Where did you watch the game? Uh, where was I? Where was I? Uh, we were in Melrose Arch. Me and a couple of friends were in Melrose Arch. We watched the game there. Oh, yeah. the, the fan parks were like crazy. Mm. Yeah. Full. There was like, I think in Melrose Arch alone, there was like two big like fan parks there. And it was crazy. A lot of people there was. It was amazing though. The atmosphere was crazy. Yeah, no, I can imagine just you know, just being there. I saw a video of a couple of South Africans uh, in New Zealand watching the game <laughs> at yeah, a van like, park. <laughs> no, it was at a restaurant and they literally just like, it was like seven South African supporters yeah. and just New Zealanders. New Zealand, and South Africa wins and they, they are celebrating. The like seven of them. The <laughs> seven of them are like cheering, going yeah. wild and you, New Zealanders are leaving one by one <laughs> and just giving them dirty eyes. Just yeah. <laughs> But I think this past week or so man it's just been awesome it has been awesome being South Africa yeah. yeah with the trophy parade and everything I think we actually me and Chandra went to the to the airport to welcome back the box yeah. it was just lacker man it was just yeah. it's lacker being South African right now at the moment uh, Sia Sia made it lacker man he yeah. he didn't disappoint Because I think if it was any other captain, he'll just be like, yeah, yeah. thank you. He interacted thank with you, the... Thank you, thank yeah, you. The vibe. He yeah, actually right. was like, hey, take the cup out of the bed. <laughs> take the cup out. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. Let's celebrate. And that cup is going to smell like brandy for a long time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. Yes, it's such an amazing... Mm. I mean, back to back. I mean, those guys, they re- really, really deserve the day. Yeah. And especially how they did it. Let's like... There's you could you could see the belief in mm-hmm. who they wanted to do it for. Mm. I mean, three games at one point. How do you do that? Just like it's <laughs> like, crazy. That's not normal. Like, <laughs> this now it's crazy. Yeah, for me, this is definitely the greatest World Cup team ever. And the reason why I say so is that nobody has, uh, like, went down the road that they went down to the World Cup played. Top teams, yeah, the top teams, yeah. all of them. them. Yeah. There was a, there was a difficult, difficult. Teams. Our pool games were difficult. Uh, the quarterfinals, semifinals. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was, it was excruciating. Yeah, just watching them play, and it was tough game after tough game. There was not an easy road, and we did it again. We, no one has ever. Um, I mean, we've got a perfect record in our final. Um, we, yeah. we've never lost the final before. Um, we conceded a try in the yeah. final. Finally, um, we we had a, it was a difficult road to that final. So big up to the boys, man. There's nothing more I can say that we haven't said already. Yeah. I think I've loved the celebrations, man. From Arches Neyman cutting Elizabeth's hair, <laughs> from Damien <laughs> Villas getting the tennis yeah. ball. <laughs> no. It's been crazy, man. But It, the thing is, I don't blame Damien. I mean, Damien is 25. Back to back world champion and he's won the URC. Yeah. What more do you want? What more do you want? What more do you want at the age of 25? Yo, he's achieved everything. And he should celebrate. He, he should, should celebrate man. for the next month or the so. The next month or so. They should give him off at least. Yeah, they should. He should be back next year for URC, <laughs> yeah. not now. If I can ask one thing, please don't wash that kit. Uh, frame <laughs> it. Uh, and just let it, let it, and one day you can auction it off. For no, um, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> So mm. Lionel, uh, I don't know. A lot of people don't even know you actually have your own brand, uh, LM13. Yeah, it's a it's a sock a sock thing that obviously started out uh, as just like a type of a hobby. But I, I'm 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 into grip socks, so okay. for all sports, mm. uh, netball, hockey, soccer, rugby. Oh, like that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Also, what I what I found like I used to obviously I used to play and I, I never wore grip socks. Uh, I was like. I used to play. They they give you this uh, Puma sock, the 
what if it's ever socks you play with and then yeah. in the boot sometimes my my feet tend to sweat man and then oh. my foot moves around in the boot and uh, obviously that's why i actually when i especially i had this idea obviously when i was overseas and i saw some of some of the guys uh playing with it and i was like okay and i bought myself a, a pair first mm. and i was like oh this can work and then i'm like i'd love to do this in south, in south africa obviously it was yeah before me but mm-hmm. uh, uh lm13 is my is my baby oh man it's awesome i've I've personally i've seen it on instagram uh is there anywhere else people can find it on the socials uh uh on instagram as it's where it is now so uh soon the website will be up uh, and then it will it will be on there so at the moment it's just uh on uh on social media oh sorry forgot i don't forget (laughs) 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 at at recover at sa at loftus at loftus park i also uh, they also sell from there oh oh, from from a shop there yes yes, yes. yeah so check it out people uh loftus and on on instagram it's lm13 check out the grip socks from lionel Mm -hmm. just follow him on social media uh lionel mapu uh, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, the same thing. Facebook, the same thing. Do it. Twitter. I mean, X is it called? X, that's right. X. Yeah, oh, X. I keep forgetting. But I also <laughs> just want to say Twitter the whole time. <laughs> on on X now and in any other social media platforms. Uh, that's about it. That's about yeah. it. You're not on TikTok. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know about on TikTok as well. Thank oh, you. Good. Do you do you dance on TikTok? No, not really. Eh? Not really. Not okay. really. Eh? I, I, mean, might, uh, I, I think it's fine now. I think when TikTok came out, people didn't want to dance. Yeah, yeah. I'm this close cool. to dancing on yeah, TikTok. I'm tired yeah, of close. making. Yeah, <laughs> I'm tired of making funny videos. Although I, I do have, although I do have one type of dance, walk dance. Mm. It's just uh, quite quite a lot of views and a lot of likes, so <laughs> so maybe I should I should venture into it. <laughs> I, think into the I think you should bring that those dance in. Yeah. Just. <laughs> Uh, but Lionel, it was absolutely amazing having you on the podcast. Uh, we can't thank you so we can't thank you enough for for being on, um, and we wish you all the best uh, this season uh, with the URC. Um, yeah, and wish the Bulls nothing but the best. How is it playing under Jake White now? Jake is a great coach, actually. I mean, you just you don't like he's having his resume uh, as a manager mm. uh, says says it alone and. Doing what he did, like in our first year of uh, of URC, and that was, mind you, that was the first year I've like worked under him, mm. uh, taking us all the way to the final. I mean, like he also is a coach that knows exactly what he wants. Uh, he's a good rugby brain. Uh, he's a good manager, and yeah, and it's just been uh, just been a crazy uh, couple of years, uh, especially under him. And uh, he's a great coach. Okay, cool. No, we can't wait. We can't wait to come to Loftus and uh, see you play live. Um, I mean, I'm I'm at a lot of games at Loftus. Um, I just don't like going to to to, to the Emirates. Uh, yeah, I don't like yeah. going to Lions Park because it's just it's, it, I don't know. Like it just feels it's it's a little dangerous for me. You know, especially when we're coming people, out yeah. the game. I was robbed like one, so I don't know, like when I go to Pitoria. Yeah. Still have trauma. Yeah, yeah, I still have trauma. Yeah. Like I, I, but I want to go watch, but it's just yeah. I, I hope they can just make it safer for us there. Yeah. But when you go to Pitoria, you know I like we no. are safe. The Bulls flags yeah. are, are, are flying yeah. from far yeah. and wide. And yeah, I love going to Loftus. So yeah, man, I can't wait to see more of you uh, on the field this year. It's going to be a great year for the Bulls of what I've seen so far. Uh, wishing you guys nothing but the best. Any closing remarks you want to make? Yeah, man, just uh, Lionel, thanks for coming through, man. Uh, it was you. awesome chatting to you. And yeah, it was an awesome show. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Cool. Adios. Cheers, guys. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>